Hi guys, welcome to another Freelancer Masterclass video. Today, uh, our sponsor is Cover, Cover.ai. Uh, big corporate benefits for freelancers. So go ahead and check them out. The link is below this video and also be sure to subscribe. With that said, uh, today we're gonna talk about what freelancing skill is right for me. So a lot of you are probably either doing freelancing now or not doing freelancing or in a corporate job you don't like, and you're just really wondering what direction should I take my freelancing career or um, what direction should I even start freelancing in? And there's kind of a, it's difficult, but it's easy at the same time. It's an easy question to ask, but it's difficult to answer. Um, and it didn't come easy to me. And it's also changed over the years as well. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I started out as an SEO expert, search engine optimization, many, many years ago. It makes me seem old, but um, over 15 years ago. And I've since morphed into um, fractional CMO. Uh, now I'm a marketing funnel expert, right? So it, it kind of changes over time with your interest. But to answer the question, what freelancing skills should I learn? Number one, what you want to do is you want to really look into what makes you happy. What's your passion? That might seem like kind of a cop-out answer, but if that isn't addressed, then you won't get what you want anyway. All right. So if you could wake up every day and not feel like you're working and take money for something you're doing, what would that be? And yes, it could be something that you might not even think is possible. So um, I'm a tennis player. It could be something like maybe it's teaching tennis. Maybe you want to be a, a freelance tennis instructor, a virtual freelance tennis instructor. Okay. That's possible. Absolutely. Um, golf, same thing. Okay. Insert any sport here. Um, maybe it's, maybe you love being a parent um, to the point where you, you have all these little tips and tricks. You want to do, you know, some kind of freelance parenting course um, or coach people, new parents on how to be great parents, right? There's a lot of possibilities, just thousands of thousands of possibilities of freelance, but it has to align with your passion because if you wake up every day and you don't like what you do, you might as well just go get a corporate job, all right? Um, because a lot of people don't like their corporate job because they've been niched into this, this area that they didn't think somehow their, their career took them in a path that they're now in and they don't really like it and doesn't align with their passions, okay? So if you're someone that is in a career that you don't like, think about what passion uh, you have that you would like, because you can make money in just about anything you can think of, no matter how small of an industry. Okay. You can even create an industry if you wanted to make money from it. Money's out there. Trillions of dollars trains, trade hands every single day. You can get some of that. All right. Um, the other thing is to look at is how viable is it to make money? So, I just had a freelancer come to me. Um, they came to me with an idea. I won't say what it is because they're probably listening to this video, but it was, it was an idea that aligned with their passion, but it, it didn't pay very much. It was in the teaching industry. Okay. Now it didn't pay very much because ultimately um, this person was working in a niche within a niche within a niche that was very hard to target online. Like you really had to know a person to understand if they were willing to be paying for it. And um, it just so happens that the person, the type of people they were targeting was someone who did not have a job. So that made it even harder. So what you want to do is you want to look, align your passion, but also look within that niche on who has the money that'd be willing to pay me for this freelancing service. Can I fetch an hourly rate or a fixed rate or a per project rate for this service? Like how can I maximize that value of that passion that I, that I found? Um, so, you know, for example, um, there is the niche of tennis instructing, let's say. Okay, so within tennis instructing, there are se several different types of tennis instructors. There are the advanced tennis instructors, which will do your stroke analysis and use various types of software to really analyze your strokes. And they could do that virtually. Um, they just have their clients set up cameras in the court, right? And then there's um, teaching kids tennis in person, right? So maybe summer camps or, and stuff. So what's so great about that? Well, you charge a kid $25 for a tennis lesson for up to six kids in a group, and you're making over $100 an hour, $150 an hour in this case, having six kids paying $25 uh, for a tennis lesson versus being a virtual coach where you can take clients anywhere and doing a, an analysis on somebody's strokes might only pay $75 maybe a hundred, I don't know, but it's, it's less money than doing a group in-person coach, but there's pros and minus for each of them, right? Group in person, locally, you'd have to get a bunch of kids 
to aggregate into to one lesson that takes time to get six customers in one. <laughs> and then there's also on the other side of that, the virtual lesson where you can take clients anywhere in the world, but it requires expensive software and probably some kind of paid ads or some kind of online marketing funnel to bring in those clients rather than local marketing. So weigh the pros and cons of each um, type of person you're going to be going after within your niche and find out which one pays the most and makes you the happiest. And that marriage between the two figure like a Venn diagram. Here's your passion. Here's the pay. You're going to find like a nice little middle ground there. Uh, that's the niche that you want to go after. Okay. I hope that helps. Thanks.